on everybody? It's your boy Jeremy Bob coming at you live once again from the workshop. Tonight we're going to be talking about water damage. Everybody knows water screws up phones, right? Now what everybody doesn't know is what they can do uh, to save their device. People think that just putting their phone in a bag of rice is going to be uh, sufficient enough. Now, uh, rice, it was a great idea because, of course, the grain is going to absorb any moisture. Now, uh, that being said, moisture is not necessarily what we're all worried about. Uh, you got to be looking at all the mineral content that's going to be left on the board. So, uh, you, you can dry the phone out with rice, but you're not cleaning anything out. So, rice is not going to do it all the time. 70% uh, of the time, we have to go through processes like you guys are about to see. Now, we use special types of cleaners. So, we have Branson EC cleaner, it's a concentrate, it goes in the ultrasonic cleaner for electronics. Isopropyl alcohol is a good tool, but not necessarily the appropriate tool for this job. Today we're going to go through, I'll show you guys how we do it here at our shop. It might not necessarily be the way that you guys do it, but this is the way that we found out that works the best for us. Alright guys, easy way to identify an iPhone 6S. There's going to be an S in a box underneath iPhone. We're going to start this off the same as we do uh, screen replacement. Start with our penner lobes, crack the phone open. Um, I use these flat tweezers and a pick. I've seen other, other repair techs use heat and baseball cards. This is just a method that's always worked the best for me. Man, it's super crusty in here. So this phone, uh, as you can see here, has been dried out for a while. They used it in rice, pulled all the moisture out, left all the minerals. Uh, you can see here that it seems the top of the phone was most affected. The water gets behind that back plate, it's gonna be like a vacuum. So that screen's gonna be shot. Yeah. Rust, not good. Super crusty. The water probably came in through the ear speaker. As always, start with that battery. You never want to do this while that battery is plugged in. For the sake of it, I'm going to pull the tapping engine out in case that battery is toast. One of the first things to go on a water damage is the battery. Screens, battery, charging port, those are the three that uh, generally go out first. The rest was actually holding the taptic engine down to the charging port there. So bad. LCD that out of the way. As always, organize your screws so that you know exactly where they're going to go. Uh, it's very important that you put the screws back exactly where they come from. Water damage indicator. You guys can't tell, but uh, that camera is fried. There's actually a lot of heat residue. You can see there's discoloration and a lot of what seems to be dry salt. And the only screw on the board that is not a Phillips. Alrighty, just keep on breaking it down. Totally looks like the water damage came in from that ear speaker. Alright, and you'll notice that I am just now removing the SIM card tray. Uh, reason being for that, it helps hold the board in place and it stays out of the way until it's time to be laid down. You'll see that there's a small screw that I'm going to be placing yep, right in. It's on top of that screw. Uh, it just helps me remember where that screw goes. It maps out the board essentially on that that black map. The rust actually sees that screw in the hole. Corrosion 
was holding the bracket down. And the rest of the screw is holding down the antenna. This is one of my favorite repairs. It's very in-depth. Uh, you get a good feel for the phone. I've probably done 300 of these in the last few years and uh, it definitely gets easier if you're worried about uh, remembering how everything's laid out. Do a few water damage runs, we'll get it down pretty quick. Alright, antenna's loose, keep it with the rest, one last screw there. Always remember to get that screw, it's kind of an oddball. Never force the board out. If you feel like something's grabbing, there's something grabbing. So there's an antenna here that's actually uh, weaving underneath the board and on top of the board and held in by little metal pins. Make sure you get that out, you don't want to tear it. There we go. And we have a free board. Alright, so on the back here you'll notice that there's two stickers, one there and one there. We're going to take these stickers off because it gives access uh, to a lot of hardware that's actually on the board, otherwise uh, it, it wouldn't be able to get in there and get cleaned up. Just think, you have something that's sandwiched in there and we have some minerals and deposits that are on the board. If you don't open it up like this, it, you're just shaking things around inside and it's not going to do you any good. The same as just soaking a phone in isopropyl alcohol and then drying it out in rice. You're still going to have residue. So open it up, give it the best chance that you can at coming back. See how everything's all opened up now? Alright guys, thanks to Gentle Dental in Hillsboro, Oregon for their courteous donation of a ultra soft toothbrush. Uh, we are going to scrub the board. Now, I say scrub, what I, what I honestly mean is, is kind of just brush ever so slightly. It's not like there's a magic marker stuck to the countertop. Especially down here, there's so many little capacitors and filters that can easily be knocked off, especially if there's an insane amount of salt present. Salt just eats, eats, eats the solder right off the board. I'd prefer it come soaking wet, but you know, what can you ask? Ready to go. Alright, so the ultrasonic cleaner. It is one part Benson soap to 20 parts water. I run this through probably more than I ought to. So I, I aim for eight hours straight in the ultrasonic. Turn the board every single time. Reason being, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner, it works on um, vibration. So just try to picture that the board is in there sideways everything's going to start vibrating down so if there's a ledge or a plate or a sticker it's just going to get caught there and if you just leave it there you're going to end up with a buildup of, of you know leftovers so rotate it give the board the best chance that you can of coming clean this water smells so bad that one thing about benson it smells like fish oil and you definitely smell it when you put it on the hot plate. 120 degrees Celsius is fine. You're not going to melt anything on the board. Look at that shot. So I, I leave the board on, on the hot plate for about six hours so that I can ensure a, a completely dry board. Last thing I want is to try to fire up a wet board. And put her back.
back together. One of the most satisfying parts of a water damage build. So you'll notice on the plate that's going to cover that, that camera up, you'll see that black residue that I was speaking of earlier. Uh, that camera totally got hot. Super, super hot. Lock down that Taptic engine. Don't need that coming loose. We're going to go ahead and try out the original LCD on this one. I'm not looking to replace one. Seeing as we bought this phone strictly for the purpose of making this video for you guys. Don't forget your penelope screws. My absolute favorite part about the whole repair right there. All right, let's plug it in and see what we got. Crossing my fingers. Ooh, money! That's that's satisfying right there, because that's a lot of work. And for it to come on like that, that's awesome. Test out the touch. Looks like everything's working good. Awesome, another successful repair here at Tell You The Mechanics. All right, guys, until next time, like, subscribe, favorite, and we'll catch you next time at the shop.